Have you ever wondered why ghosts look different? How do they change their shell? Is it canon and is it a choice? We've had some hints about this answer for a while, but lore from this season reveals the truth about ghost shells and their appearance. Ghosts are our friends, companions. As discussed in a recent video, they are the little ball in the center of the shell, seen in concept art. Also, when you get revived or a ghost is reviving, you can see this more clearly. Ghosts, of course, have their own shells, a hard, protective casing, much like crabs, for example. And like crabs, ghosts can change their shell if they wish. Destiny 1's Frontier Shell said this in its description. Tough, rugged, and defiantly colored, ready to brave the high frontier, ghosts can self-modify at will. I believe this was one of the first DLC shells in Destiny 1, and it explains how ghosts can self-modify. Our next example brings us to Pulled Pork. In Forsaken, the Ghost Stories lore book, we see an entry with Pulled Pork the Ghost, a ghost searching for his guardian. This, of course, turned out to be Glint. That was a nickname for him, but in this card, he gets gifted a shell. Hey, buddy, she calls when they get close. What you doing? Pulled Pork finishes up a scan of a floating piece of concrete and rebar, then turns toward them. I am looking for my guardian, he chirps. That's nice. You gonna find him in that rock? You never know, Miss Catchy32. Maybe my guardian is very small. Maybe, Catchy agrees but you might want to consider scanning the dead, bud. That shell is pretty snappy. Is it new? It's reef purple with a flower-like silhouette and silver detailing. Yes, it is. It was a gift, and thank you for your suggestion. I have considered it. I do often scan the dead. I also scan other things. I like to be thorough. Pulled pork bobs in place politely, almost bowing. Please excuse me one moment. He turns to scan a piece of warped plasteel. So there we have an example of Pulled Pork getting gifted a shell which he changed into. When he revives Aldrin, of course, he has a different shell that looks like this. Also remember, Spider rigged Glint with explosives during Season of the Hunt, so if he and Crow tried to leave, Glint would die. Spider was able to make these modifications to Glint's shell, which many others like Drifter have also done to their ghosts. Marcus Wren's ghost wanted a new shell. Fine. Dee Dee floated over to the wall where Marcus's bright red sparrow racing jacket dangled from a hook. You know, I've always wanted one of these. For me. Really? Is that weird? No, Marcus jumped to his feet. It's aces. Of course you need a racing shell. I'm going to make you the flashiest shell you've ever seen. He grabbed his ghost out of the air and kissed her shell. Thank you, Dee Dee. In the Witch Queen's Horfrost Z armor piece, we see this. Hardware architecture analysis confirmed that this derelict creature exhibited a malleable structure. Certainly wasn't created with a specific framework in mind, and looks to have adapted its configuration to its light bearer once acquired. Is this necessary for the bonding process? For creating the perception of companionship? Is it possible for a ghost to connect to a light bearer without undergoing restructuring? So from that entry, it says they weren't created with a specific framework in mind. The hive ghosts weren't created this way and looked like this in the beginning. They all looked like normal ghosts, but adapted this new form once they resurrected their light bearers. And speaking of hive ghosts, in last week's entry from Season of the Witch titled A Big Fan, Amaru puts on a new shell, goes into the city and watches a crucible match sort of undercover. He also meets Lord Shax. Amaru floated at the edge of a large crowd, waiting for an opportune moment. He tried to remain inconspicuous. The hive ghost had snuck out of the tower, leaving his bone ridge shell behind to avoid unwanted attention. He flinched an old shaded shell from an office junk drawer. The sunglasses made it perfect for sneaking around undercover. Given the gaudy shells these days preening tower ghosts wore, Amaru was sure his new appearance would go unnoticed. He wandered around the last city for a while, watching the citizens putter from one insane task to the next. Since resurrecting Savathun, Amaru had been witness to the creation of a throne world, cosmic-level spellcraft, and interplanetary invasions. B 
being pent up with the humans, watching them haggle over the price of charred carrion skewers was maddening. He was nearly bored enough to return to the tower when a stream of rowdy celebrants piqued his interest. They poured into the streets from houses, bars, and bedding parlors, all making their way toward the edge of the city. Amaru floated among them. The crowd eventually arrived at the perimeter of an abandoned military base. Well-to-do patrons filtered past Red Jacks into the base, while most of the crowd gathered around enormous screens set up outside. The screens displayed the opening salvos of a crucible match, and Amaru could detect changes in air pressure as the Guardians bombarded each other within the facility. After the match's brutal conclusion, the crowd dispersed. A few diehard fans waited around the gate to congratulate the participants. Eventually, the Crucible's boisterous announcer emerged to receive his fans' well wishes. Once the crowd had thinned, Amaru floated up to the one-horned guardian. I love what you're doing here, big guy, Amaru effused. I got friends who would be very into your whole kill-or-be-killed vibe. Amaru could sense Lord Shax blinking beneath his helmet, trying to place the ghost's voice. Well met. Perhaps your friends will join us on the field. Oh, you met some of them already, Amaru chuckled. You got a lot in common, actually. Amaru raised his voice in imitation of the Titan's booming commentary. Only the strong survive. Make pain your ally. Dying is an essential element. That's right in their wheelhouse. You might even call it a philosophy. Well, the Crucible is more than just senseless violence, Shax patiently explained. It's about honor and fair play. It's about bringing the best out in one another and rising above our limitations. I totally understand, Amaru said, chuckling inwardly the Titans can rhetoric. The goal is to be the sharpest we can be, and anyone who can't handle the edge gets cut. There's a certain logic to it. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, Shaq said as his gleaming sparrow materialized beside him. But remember, the Crucible is about more than just combat, more than just guardians. It's about putting your differences aside and uniting everyone in the city, including the ghosts. He seemed to wink. I'm a big fan, Amaru gushed. Thank you for uniting so many different types of people, more than I could have imagined. Many thanks for your support, Shax hollered as he revved the engines of his sparrow. I hope to see you and your friends again soon. Until next time, the massive guardian gave his admirer a brief salute and sped off into the city. Amaru watched the titan recede into the distance. Whatever tickles your trigger finger, buddy, he muttered. The hive ghost floated off toward the tower, renewed in his purpose. At least now he knew what the Witch Queen saw in humans. Maybe they would come around after all. So there you have it, Guardian. Some stories about ghosts changing their shells. Some for fashion, some to adapt to their new light bearers, and some just by choice, changing their looks and fashion up a bit. If you'd like to see some other Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.